three, two, one. All right, here we are in part two. We are going to be creating this little animation based off of a spline. This is a, an example of what you might do with a text or some sort of logo. So without further ado, let's dive right on in. Here we are back in Cinema 4D R21, and we are gonna begin by pasting in that red material, that red velvet material we made from the previous one. And then I want to bring in this illustrator file with the rocket lasso logo just because i want to work from this rocket as our main spline here so selecting those points hit uw ui to delete everything else select those zero out and i think we're going to aim for this to be is a square yep that's square so i'm going to jump this up to 400. excellent uh, and then reset PSR button, zero that all out, R for rotate, spin this flat on the ground. And I think it's 45 degrees, so I'll even rotate that to 45 degrees. Grab the axis, zero it out, zero the axis out entirely. Cool, so that should all be reset, and we are ready to extrude this upward. Put it into an extrude, and let's extrude 100 units. There we go, very nice. Oh, and it looks like I had a new, oh, now with this, copy, close the scene file, and paste it into this scene file. Excellent. All right, we've got our material. Create a plane, which is the default scale, just like I wanted. And along those lines, I guess I'm gonna hit T for scale on the rocket and shrink that down a little bit. Excellent. And let's see, is that a little tall? Yeah, maybe, so let's drop this down to 75. Sweet. All right. What, how do we want to do this? Well, first we'll apply the material, then we'll select our plane, subdivide it some more. Now our, let's go 50 by 50. We're not going to be having two splines in this one. So, sorry, clicking a little fast there, 50 by 50. And there, I'm going to, I, I could move that up into the air, but actually what I'm going to do is move the rocket down I'm going to move the rocket down minus 80, so extra five units. Because I want this plane to just be at zero, 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 it makes it easy to reset it if need be. We could move it, but it can get a little bit weird that way. Um, and rename that cloth. And we're going to be doing all the settings again here from scratch, just so that we can be very precise and reiterate what we're making. I'll make a floor minus 80 units to be right there on the ground below that. And that's looking good. Now, actually, the rocket is a lot longer than it is, you know, wide. So you know, this could be a lot skinnier this way. Now, something you'll notice is I'm actually making this a lot smaller. Not a lot, but it's, a, it's smaller than you'd need a, a blanket or a cloth to drape over it. I do want to make sure this is approximately square. So I'm going to eyeball this, just increase that until those polygons look about square in their count. Excellent. And that's even lower poly, so this should run extra fast for us. We'll probably crank up those settings in a little bit. But the reason we're making it smaller than our actual geometry here is because we're going to be growing it, of course. So with that in mind, let's add our dynamics tags. The floor will have a collider body. The extrude will also have a collider body. I'm going to make sure that that's a static mesh, which it is. And then the cloth, which will move up to the top, will have a new soft body. All the same settings. It's actually, we can grab all three of these settings to start because I want zero bounce and I want 222% friction. I do that because it's quick to type. Around 200 is a good number. Now to just the cloth's settings inside of force. Let's just go and add all the settings we thought were pretty good in the last one. So a drag of 50, a lift of 50, and two-sided. That way it's seeing the front and back of this one-sided object. The, you know, there's not a volume to it. And then under soft body, we want 200% structure, zero damping, 50 shear, so it's default. Flexion, five, so it's very, uh, very bendable and no damping on that one. And that pretty much covers it, except for us keyframing the stiffness. Now, we got a couple of options here. We have to think of the way we want to do this. I should be able to hit play right now, and that's gonna fall, and it's gonna drape along the object. So that's a that's a fine start. And 
you know, just as a backup, I'm going to create a copy of that cloth and turn it off just in case we need a backup. But let's do something we didn't do in the last one, and that is set initial position or initial state. So in the dynamics that we have a set initial state. Something that's neat is if we hit play, we let this kind of drape over and settle down a little bit. I can hit set initial state. And when we rewind, that becomes the starting point of the soft body, which is excellent. We can, we're going to be doing this several times to have more control over the way this works. Now it's already sort of settled in. So I think at the time of zero, we can keyframe and well, we're going to set some keyframes. So first, let's set our default keyframes. I want linear, so I'm going to control D and then key interpolation, set interpolation to linear. And now it's going to be not easing in and easy out, easing out when we record keyframes. So going to the dynamics tag inside of soft body, we want to, again, record the rest state at 100, always start at 100. And then over the course of, I'm not sure how many frames, let's give it a full 35 frames. Let's try doubling it. Doubling it might be too much, but let's see what that does for us. And I honestly don't think there's much else that we need to do right now. So it's already settled. So immediately this is going to start growing. And the instant it grows, you can see that we get all these nice wrinkles appearing overall. Now it's a little, there's a little bit too, fr too much friction perhaps, and it can't quite drape over. And uh, there's a lot of structure to it. But you know what? At a glance right now, I got to say, we don't have that many polygons. There just isn't that much resolution, especially once we double it in size. So with that in mind, let me go back to dynamics, clear the initial state. And here's something I was talking about. I, I think this might be a bug. I haven't figured out a way around it, but I reset the initial state and you'll see that it rotated slightly and the position changed. So the one of the reasons I left at 000 is it's really easy to hit reset PSR and put it right back to 000. So yeah, just a tiny detail, but I think that's important. Uh, you know what, I maybe it's going overboard, but I'm going to double our segments. So this is going to jump to 100 and height segments of 28. So we have twice as many here. That's not quite square. So I'm going to add a few extra. There we go. 100 by 30. And, um, you know, I'm going to select our dynamics tag. And instead of putting natural, that initial state, let's just go ahead and let it pre-roll for 20 frames. And then we'll drag this one a little bit further. So that's going to... It has 20 frames to settle and then 40 frames to slowly grow. Let's see how this does for us. So this should be hopefully plenty of frames for this to start settling down. Now it is intersecting through the surface of the object a little bit, but don't worry, we're gonna be working around that in a little bit. And then it starts growing and you can immediately see these wrinkles start getting created and that's all actually working pretty well overall, but definitely we see some things that we need to fix. Definitely, definitely. So. First of all, I think we might want to make, let's turn off the cloth for a moment. And I think that we want this extrude to, first of all, have as few polygons as possible. A couple of things we can do there. First of all, we have the angle, if we click on the spline, and we've got all this extra detail traveling around the edge. Uh, and all that detail is great, but I don't think we need that much information. So I'm going to jump this up to 15 degrees. So there's not anywhere near as many polygons. So it should be easier for cinema to calculate that. In addition to that, I believe that we should make it so this isn't one giant n-gon. So let's control exactly how that's subdividing. Inside of the extrudes caps, we can change our block type. Currently, it's n-gon, but let's try the new type, which is called Delaunay. If I turn that on, what it's going to do is it's going to have as many polygons as it needs to on the outside and then slowly get bigger as it nears the center. Now, if we twirl that down, we could turn on quad. It's going to try and make quads wherever it can. I think that's fine. We can change the density, but oftentimes it doesn't change yet. In this case, it doesn't really seem to have much of an effect. If it was a bigger object, I think it would. I'm just going to right-click and reset that de to default. When in doubt, leave it on the default. And honestly, like even here, like that's still quite a few subdivisions. So I'm trying to think, uh, should we jump this up even higher? Jump that up to 25. It's going to start getting a little chunky up near the nose. But by jumping up to these larger numbers, let's say even 35, we could change this from adaptive to subdivided. And we can put a subdivision length as well. Let's try 10, maybe 20. There we go. So now you see there's not too many on this curve, but there's plenty of them traveling along the edge. So hopefully that's the best of both worlds. And we've got some subdivisions on the inside. Let's just see if at a glance that makes our cloth run a little bit better. So 
turning that back on again, hit play, and let's see if the intersection problems happen as much. And at a glance already, it's working a lot better. We've got those quads. It has more subdivisions. It knows how to look at those. So, you know, that's a good start. And now we've got the cloth growing. It's draping over everything. You can see uh, quite nicely that we're getting these beautiful wrinkles traveling for the edge. Like, I'm just so happy that this technique's work. This technique works so cleanly. And as I mentioned earlier, that we could have been doing this so long ago and we just didn't know that uh, just growing the cloth, I mean, I certainly didn't know that just growing this cloth could have such a profound effect on the overall effect, uh, on the overall way that this looks wrinkly. Because um, if you just drop the cloth on it, it's not going to wrinkle like this. Now, we definitely have some problems. We want to make sure that we can slide off the edges here. But also, we need this to be far enough off the side where... This might not be, um, it's not going to catch. We need this to drape over there. So a couple different things we might try there. But before that, it's looking pretty nice. So let's create a subdivision surface and just see what that looks like when we smooth it out a little bit. And take a look at this wrinkled cloth and how quick that simulation was to do on the overall shape. Now I'm using this spline because, you know, I think a common use of this would be something like using it on text. And, you know, this is as good as using text. We got some sharp edges. We got some inner areas. So... It gives us some options there, definitely. Um, so um, pull this back out of the subdivision surface. Like we said earlier, you don't want to do the calculations inside there because the dynamics do not play well inside of a subdivision surface. So let's think of some ways we might be able to fix this. Now, currently, there's a ton of friction on everything. And that friction is stopping things from sliding around. So just for fun, if I were to grab this extrude, and go to the friction. I'm going to turn off all the friction on it. And with all the friction off, I'm going to hit N to B so we can see the polygons again. With all the friction off, that means that our geometry here should be able to more freely slide around the front and the back specifically. So, but it also might like fall down in this center part. So let's just see what happens. Hit play. There's no friction, so it's going to be a lot more free. And you can see it sliding along the surface, falling inside that gap. But let's just see... Uh, it's taking a little bit for it to grow, but once it starts growing, uh, it, over here it's slid too far in the middle, but up here you can see that uh, very easily this is sliding nicely towards the front. So interesting uh, extra details there to note. Uh, now it grows quite a bit. It's draping over there, but of course you'll see one of the natural problems here is with it being without this friction, you just see how it's sliding all over the place. We've got some nice bunching up over here, but like we lost all of these wrinkles on the top. So that is another variable for us to always keep in mind. If we don't want as many wrinkles, we could start pulling back on the friction. Now, the next step I'd probably do is, depending on the shape, you know, I, I think I would like there to be plenty of uh, grow. I want this to grow a lot. The more it grows, the more we're going to get more wrinkles. But in this particular case, I think we might need this to be a little bit bigger than the beginning of the object so that it, it can slack over the edges. And I don't, it's not necessarily a bad thing that we don't need quite as many polygons on, uh, we don't need it to grow quite as much. But with this in mind, let's crank up our friction again. And our poly, our, our, our point count, I think, has changed visually a little bit. So it's been running really quickly. So I don't mind jumping that up to, uh, once again, I just want them to be square. So about 38 looks good. They're just eyeballing it and hit play and see what we get. It's going to be a little bit slower, but not too much slower. The friction's back, so it's not sliding all over the place. We can see this starting to drape very nicely. It's enough over the edge here, at least, where we're getting better coverage. But is it enough for this to freely slide down here? Is it scaling up enough? Now, yes, in general, it, like it's, hint, it's there's a little bit of a peak there. Like Potentially, that'd be something we want to deal with. Um, but as we approach our final growth here, I don't know. It's just uh, it's a little tricky because... Is it too much? Are we? Is it growing a little bit too much overall? Like I love the way these wrinkles look. Don't get me wrong. Drop this in. Hit NA. And like so, we got all this cloth covering the overall shape. But uh, I think we, it it grew too much. I don't think at this scale we'd want to grow all the way to two hundred percent. Maybe one hundred and fifty. Uh, in addition to that, I feel like. When you're dropping a cloth, I know this just for a fact that when you're dropping a cloth over a lot of different shapes, you don't just drop a square cloth over it. You drop some sort of rounded cloth. You see, we get a lot of slack on these edges. There's just too much cloth here because it's not at all in the shape of 
of whatever we're dropping on, in this case, the rocket. So a couple different things that we might want to address there. Keeping that in mind, pull this back out of the subdivision surface. Uh, it, it didn't jump that time, so that's good. And let's see, what am I thinking? Inside of the soft body, we can select this keyframe here and say, I want this to only to scale up to 150, not 200. So it's not gonna go crazy there. And then uh, here's something that might be handy. It's not gonna grow as much, but it's kind of, everything's falling down into this pit a little bit. So th something I'm thinking would be, let's help this along. I'm gonna create a cube, T for scale, scale this down a decent bit. And honestly, I'm just gonna eyeball it, scoot this down. And what I'm gonna do is have there be a shape that's temporarily here, something that we can turn on and off. So there we go, that's approximately covering up everything. In fact, I'll even scoot up that little bit just so it's definitively above the object. And let's steal all the settings from the extrude. This is pretty much going to be an extension of the extrude. And it's growing over the uh, like a really long length here. So let's say right around, the t it stops growing at 60. Let's say at about 50, frame 50, this object goes from being enabled. Let's keyframe that. Let's go one frame forward, shortcut letter G. It goes to being not enabled. So it should freely be able to slide across that top, or at least it doesn't want to fall down into these cracks. So hopefully it can fall down in the rest of this. And then suddenly it'll disappear and then everything can fall into that gap. Let's just see what that looks like by itself. So we're scaling a little bit less and it can't fall into that square. Now, in the beginning, it's going to be there. And then we begin growing. And that means that it should create lots of wrinkles for it to bunch up on immediately. We're getting all of the testing and information we got from last time is doing a great job of bunching up all the cloth. This should only be jumping up to about, well, it's going up to 150, which will stop at 60. Now you see that suddenly disappeared. This cloth can fall down that gap. Everything's being draped quite nicely. And this time it wasn't all falling in the gap. So more of it fell on the edge. So in spite of us not growing quite as much, that did a very nice job of covering up the side here. Now, this is doing a much better job. I like the overall scale of the wrinkles. Everything looks nice. I'm still a little bit bugged by all this extra cloth falling off the side. A couple things we could potentially do. Uh, one thing I'd be inclined to say is um, you could use a, some sort of texture map and just mask that away, but it would still be there dynamically. So that's not the best idea. And then I guess we'll deal with it a little bit later, but you'll see that there's actually a couple of points here that it's a, it is escaping through our mesh. So those are two different things that we have to address, but why don't we try and make a different model here, a different mesh to drop onto it that's going to conform to the shape just a little bit better. So I'm going to select a couple of things. Um, honestly, why don't we just grab the cloth and the spline? I think that's all we need. Jump into a new scene file, keep it nice and clean. All right, so I'm gonna hit NB so we can see our subdivisions. And something I think is that we don't need that many subdivisions. In fact, we're gonna really drop this way down. I'm gonna say divided by four and divided by four. And we might need one. I wanna make these a little more square. So I'll increase that by one. There we go, it looks pretty square to me. Now, from our top point of view, I'm gonna hit NB. Actually, no, I'm gonna hit N. Uh, we have to change our display mode so we can see lines and wireframe. I don't know the shortcuts for that one, so we do that. Cool. Now you would see the rocket and we can see our very, <laughs> very low poly outline here. Now I'm going to be super rough with this, but all I want to do is actually, why don't we select all and hold down control and de deselect some of the outline. And I just want to clear out and honestly, we do not need to be precise. In fact, you know what? I'm going to be intentionally not precise with this just to show you that this still works pretty dang well. So I wanna make sure I go all the way to the nose here and maybe a little more there, uh, all the way to the nose, uh, all, all the way to the extreme different perimeters here. So I don't think this is perfectly symmetrical. It's definitely not, but I'm gonna be okay with that. And in fact, now I invert my selection, U, I, is a shortcut, delete that. And now we've got this super rough outline at one quarter of the number of polygons that we already had creating a subdivision surface and dropping inside of there is going to subdivide it two times, once and then the second time. So the only reason for changing the subdivisions is it just makes it a little bit rounded here. It's not super rounded, it's just a little bit rounded. Now you could go and spend a lot more time and really make this clean, but I just wanna show you that this is a pretty forgiving technique. So making this editable will explode it. And now we've got this piece of cloth with pretty much the same number of polygons that we had. Copy this. In fact, there should be fewer. 
copy this, go back into our scene file, keep the old one just in case we need to reference it again, paste in the new one. And uh, I'm just gonna make sure we copy the dynamics tag back to it just in case that there's anything we lost on it. So everything else stayed the same. We just deleted a whole bunch of polygons. Now, one of the important things with it, that technique is this is still pretty much like a quad mesh. It's not perfect. Every, I mean, it's still perfectly quad, but things are stretched a little bit. But each polygon is only connected to its direct neighbors in that same way. I have found if you do a more garbled mesh, of, if it's triangulated, if it connects on like five sides, a whole bunch of things, that will start slowing it down. So this will continue to run very quickly. And with how much this scales up, let's see, even with as rough as, as these edges are, let's just see what this does. And hit play, and these fall over. And immediately as this bends over, these just start looking like kind of some natural wrinkles inside of the overall shape. And especially now that this is lay, it's laying flat, it's running pretty quick. And as it starts growing, all of these wrinkles will get introduced. And now, as far as I can tell, we can't even see those overall all shapes. If there's a reason, if you're worried about that, if there's some reason to do it, make sure you spend more time, make that a cleaner mesh going all the way around. But you see how well this worked and actually it works shockingly well look how clean this is around the edge we're pretty much hiding the entire object just a little hint right there and this is covering up incredibly well now i was actually kind of hoping it would be more broken than it is okay it's, it's a little bit there do you see how this is poking through and it's actually poking through the mesh so it is officially escaping a little bit so that right there that's a little bit of a problem for us i think we want to fix that i want to show you a technique that i that I kind of stumbled across um, that I can't believe how well it works. And that is, we're just gonna create a Cinema 4D sphere and I'm just going to hit T for scale and start shrinking this and I'm gonna place it in the problem area. So something you do that's helpful is hit Shift S, which is a shortcut for snap and you can see I'm snapping the points now and that's gonna get me really close to the ballpark. Now I'm gonna turn that off. But if I take the sphere and I just move it carefully into the corner where my shape is, I can I can be a little loose because I mean we're using cloth. It's a it's a big mess. I'm gonna hide the one piece of mesh that's appearing for us. Uh, I can put this here to capture the overall shape, and then right click and add simulation tag collider body. And very specifically, this is important. I want it actually. Do you know what we want to do is let's delete that and just steal the exact same tag from the extrude because that's got all the information we want. It's got all the friction, everything cool. But the one thing we want to change now is it's not a static mesh. It is an ellipsoid. And what that means is this is going to calculate super duper mathematically accurate. And it's a sphere no matter what. So we can actually drop our segment size. We only need it to be as high as it needs to be for us to visually see that we're placing it well. So that becomes a sphere that is now essentially perfectly in penetrable. So let's make a null to contain these spheres. I can create a second one. And with this one, scoot it more towards the corner, scoot it up even more to that corner, T for scale and shrink it down. And this one's just going to be even more detailed right on that corner. So that was definitely a problem corner for us. Shrink this down like that. So that was a problem corner for us. Uh, just for safety, why don't we make a copy of that? And if I set our let's see z i think our z axis to negative is going to pop to that other side and that should protect this corner as well and you know what just while we're at it let's zero this one out into the center and i scoot this back until it's right here in the back tip of the rocket and that should prevent anything from escaping there t per scale i can probably even make this tinier and just really get it in that corner um and why not? One more duplicate and scoot it way up to the nose of the rocket. Those are the, going to probably be the problem areas. If we're being really picky, we could put a couple there, but I don't think there's any need to do that. And those should make it pretty much impossible unless the piece of cloth completely passes through the entire sphere. Nothing can get through that. And by setting this one up on the ellipsoid, not only does it pretty much make it super impossible for it to go through, it calculates really, really fast. So just creating those, it's got all the same properties everything else does. We just wanna make sure that those don't render. And if we wanted to, we could definitely add a, where is it? Render tag, display, turn on use, and set it to lines. And now those kind of become transparent so they're, we can see right through them, just so it doesn't visually block anything, just a nice little extra detail. So this is running really fast. We should be able to just hit play and make sure that those are not escaping through the corners. Now, if the resolution of our cloth was crazy high, the, the 
the higher the resolution of the cloth, probably the more accurate you want to be with those spheres because you might start seeing the impression sneak through a little bit. But this should hopefully make it impossible for those corners to let anything escape through. And probably when we get to part three with the car, we'll even talk a little bit more about pushing that technique even further. Um, now let's see what we've got here. Now those these corners are looking amazing. Like, look, that's, that is not escaping the corner at all. But I did notice over here that this is escaping through here a little bit. Now, uh, I, I guess I'm kind of glad that that happened because, you know, these kind of things can happen. But we have techniques around it. And in fact, it's pretty much what we had just done. One is pretty much what we had just done. So what I'm thinking is let's grab our spline, copy and paste it. Make sure we're in object mode. And let's drop this back inside the splines. And let's zero this out. Actually, we have to go minus five to match where we were. And we're only having a problem up in this front part. So let's just select one of those points. UW selects all those. UI to invert backspace to delete the back. Cool. Create a cloner. Put the cloner down here. Let's make a copy of the sphere. Holding it down control makes it duplicate. It's going to be a cloner set in object mode. The object will be the spline. So you can see we get a bunch of copies traveling around. And um, I wonder how detailed our spline is. I guess this is about the right resolution of a sphere, unfortunately. If we go to transform, we could scoot these in. It looks like we need to go on in this particular spline. I'm going to go on X. So as I travel negative X, you can see I've traveled inward a little bit. Um, I'm going to eyeball and hit T for scale and then scale up these spheres just a little bit. So those are pretty much living right on the edge. Now we can make as many or as few of these as we want to. Uh, in this case, we had set to count. We can set this to e, uh, step. I think step is a, is a really good mode in general. As we decrease this number, we gotta be careful not to go down to zero. But as I increase, you can see we're getting more and more spheres and every single one of those becomes a point that cannot be passed through. Now, like I said, we don't need to see too many of these points. So I'll probably reduce that. So let's also scoot this downward. We can grab our spline if we want to, or the spline's already in a good spot. So selecting the cloner, let's also move it down two on Y. Actually, I guess it's up one based on the orientation we're currently at. So don't, you know, it's not necessarily exactly my number, but make sure it's traveling down. So you can see it's sunk inside and, you know, that seems to be working well. And if we wanted to be really accurate on the edge, we could decrease this to one, one and shrink the sphere even further until you can just see it poking out the top and the side there. And now it shouldn't really be able to travel inside there. I don't know if we need much more resolution than that, but that should stop things from sneaking in the side. So just a little bit more detail and resolution. In fact, this might automatically solve our problem in these corners, but you know what? This is just layering up. Let's see uh, how this works. We don't need as many segments. So I'll decrease that until it drops down one level lighter because that doesn't change the way these dynamics will calculate. And... From my tests, this did not really take any more time to run the dynamic simulation. It just took more time to create the clones. So if you have a lot of clones, that might slow down. But let's go to object mode, back to everything. We've got our spheres. They're currently hidden. It is dynamic. Hit play. And let's see if this does a better job of not letting these things sneak through the side. Let's put these... Uh, and that's kind of a brute force way too of just making a bunch of copies. We could have just snuck a couple into the problem areas in the corner, but you know this should hopefully stop any problems from arising anywhere over on that entire section of the rocket. So uh, everything's working well. It's growing. The cube disappears. Everything sinks in. We're getting all these wonderful wrinkles everywhere, and it's looking quite nice. And as far as I can tell, up here we are not getting any hit pause. We're not getting this sneaking through. All the geometry is working very nicely nothing is escaping we've got amazing coverage we just kind of lucked out there assuming you were building this on text uh let's see how our wrinkles look this i, I like the way this is folded over everything's great in fact i'm going to click on the cloth and say dynamics set initial state so this is now stored exactly the way it is which means i can rewind and it still maintains this position rename our null up here spheres just so i can spheres just so I can collapse it and then drop our cloth into the subdivision surface and get it nice and rounded and let's see what we've got as far as wrinkles I mean personally I I like the way this looks for the scale of what I've got I like these wrinkles the scale of what you're designing is gonna be very dependent on what you make also uh, something to keep in mind it's just tricked me for a second but if I zoom out you can see this starts looking like it's poking through the corners but that's just uh, the way cinema is calculating if you get closer that's the way it actually looks so just make sure you double check that if it looked weird 
what you could do very easily is just increase your resolution of this polygon mesh and the way it runs is going to completely determine the way that those wrinkles look. So I really like the way this looks. In fact, we should probably save this file, which we haven't. Cloth wrinkles. Let's just do cloth wrinkles. B. I like the way these wrinkles look, but let's say that we had had a problem here where they didn't quite calculate correctly. So let's go ahead and, and check that out. If I were to kill our initial state, rewind, um, and then you see it didn't refresh. So we actually have to go forward a frame and backward a frame. It's something I've noticed in R21. Also, we need to do the reset PSR because it doesn't seem to like setting initial position. So a couple extra steps there. But even though it's not a problem here, I do want to point out, let's say that the mesh is escaping through into these polygons. You could also do a very similar trick to what we were doing here inside the spheres. That would be, let's make another... Actually, I don't think we could use this existing one. I think about it. We've got this spline. If I hold down Alt and create a loft nerves, it actually creates a new piece of geometry that's flat up here on the top. Mm, I guess I want the overall spline, so I will make a, another duplicate of that because I want the both of these just to show it off. Um, so I've got this loft. I'll pull up in there just so we can see it. You can see that it is creating an outline of the entire shape. I don't want it to... Let me make sure I pull it out so we can actually see it. You see that it's actually this entire shape. If we set this back to a Delaunay subdivision, you can see it's doing the shape. It's filling it in very nicely. I do want to zero this out. So I'll say zero, and then we have to zero out our loft. So, and then minus five. Cool. So now there's a second loft right there. So we'll just keep that in mind. And now if I make a second cloner, we can, oh, we can make this copy of our cloner not be on the spline, but instead be referencing this loft. Change this to polygon center, and now it's creating a clone at every single center point, and that should prevent anything from sneaking through the bottom there. Now, it, there's a lot of extra polygons in these corners. We should be able to fix that by... Uh, we don't need this many subdivisions based on what we're doing, so I can increase our... Well, maybe decreasing our maximum length, but cranking up our angle really big and I see well it didn't sub it didn't change the point count over there that much a little disappointing perhaps let's scoot this in the air I just want to see what that does yeah you can see there's a bunch of uh, it's a nice subdivision though but it does still create a lot of density there and not much we can do as far as changing that quad dominant let's see if that ch I mean it does decrease everything a little bit but they're still, eh, it's pretty even. Yeah, there's a little extra cluster right there. I'm not going to let it bother me too much. So putting this back to negative five. And of course, you just want to make sure, and you know, we'll even just leave these on to show you that those run pretty quick. Let's make sure we shrink these below the ground. I believe this time we should zero these out because it's in the center. And I think we need these to go on Z just based on the current orientation I am. So minus one based on the size of the sphere. And you see they've become nice and tiny inside. And now nothing could get through the center point of those polygons, which is where I think things might escape. So just throwing that out there. So we've got our cloth. It's hanging out here. It's doing its thing. It's looking good. And if we hit play, everything should run fast. And you can see, once again, it, I don't know that we lost much in the way of FPS with all those extra spheres being cloned. And they're all dynamic. It's still just working awesomely so the ability to use those spheres by putting it in specific places around the edge or on the center of those polygons just so it can't escape and you just have more direct control over what that's doing hopefully you can start to see how you can art direct and just get a lot of control over exactly what's happening i really love this cube trick in the center and how that's moving out of the way now we do have a very low poly count here. There's not very many polygons. So this is calculating very quickly. If you were to increase your poly count, it is definitely going to slow you down significantly. But wherever you can get away with it, especially stylistically, having you know fewer polygons is just going to speed everything up all the way across the board. So let's, um, I guess we'll set the initial state again. Let's just say you're going to do your, you know, this is a logo unveiling here. And that could, this could be a, a soda can. It could be, uh, an award uh, and then hopefully in part three we'll do a car just for fun but i'm going to set the initial state so that is now baked in this is where it begins if i rewind it's already stuck in that position with that done let's go ahead and create our spring so i think in this case it would be nice to pull the cloth upward so simulate dynamics spring and i want to snap the spring 
to a particular point. So I'm going to hit shift, shift S, and now when I hit E for move, it's going to be snapping all these different points. I'm going to find a nice middle point. Even here, there's a little bit of a, a bulge going upward, so I think that might be a nice point to yank upward. Actually, we'll scoot over right there. And we are ready to yank this upward. Now, I actually just remember something. Before we connect the spring to anything, we haven't let our model settle. We haven't let the model settle down yet. So that might be something that we want to do. If I, we, we baked this to a new position uh, on the cloth, we said set initial state. But at that initial state, if I hit play, I think you're going to see... Oh, actually, I forgot something else. Very, very important. You'll see when I hit play, it suddenly kind of exploded and... What's even going on here? Why did the cloth suddenly get all smooth and crazy looking? Well, what happened is we still have a keyframe in our dynamics and our soft body. The rest length is still at 100 and it's going to animate up to 150. But we got to keep in mind when we set the state, it was already at 150. So that's what we need to keep it at. So if I hold down control and shift, if you're on the Mac, that would be command and shift. Click on your keyframe. It'll kill that off. There's no longer a keyframe there. We need to set this to 150, the final length that it was when we set our initial state. So that should be static now. And then, before I forget, we also have our cube. And I remember in the beginning, our cube is suddenly going to enable, but that means it's going to be suddenly intersecting our geometry here and it's going to freak out. So I guess we're safe to just delete that cube. If we need to, we can go back to our older file and let it run the sim again. So with that in mind, I'm going to hit play. And hopefully nothing explodes. Okay, cool. Nothing exploded. This cube isn't suddenly appearing. And you see everything is beginning to settle down a little bit. Um, I don't think it's that important. I usually yank the cloth away pretty quickly. Depending on what you're doing, that might be more or less important. So I'm not going to let this settle too much. I did a few frames. That's fine. I'm going to set initial again. Cool. That's baked down. Now I'll grab our spring. Shift S for snap. Actually, it was already on. Shift S for snap. Go find a nice point. Shift S to turn off the snap. So that is where our spring currently lives. With the spring there, I want it to connect to an object. The object will be the cloth. I can set this to probably a point. You could do a point selection where you can make a point selection. I'm going to set a polygon point. I think it's just really quick. I can just drag this through our entire polygon selection. It does not take... Actually, it's pretty dang quick. Uh, just 142 ends up being the point where it's perfectly lined up. Speaking of perfectly lined up, very important. We have to set our rest length. If we don't set a rest length, then it's going to suddenly have some length and it'll kind of explode. So with that in mind, uh, what direction do we want to pull this? Well, we could pull it straight up. We could pull it at an angle. We do have all this cloth down in this pit, so I'd be a little bit worried about pulling it straight ahead or in that kind of direction. So we could pull it kind of however we want to. Probably straight up is going to be fine in this case. Maybe on the car, we'll pull it along the car. And so, yeah, we'll pull this one straight up. So at the time of zero, actually, let's jump to the frame five. I'm going to hold down alt, jump to five. At that frame, it's currently at this Y height. That's what I want. And then uh, let's let it take the entire timeline. Why not? Let's have it travel upward. Now, I should be able to refresh this without too much trouble. I'm going to start dragging it up and we just see the spring. I think about this high would be where the overall cloth is, but I want it well out of the scene. So I'm going to go almost double what I think it needs to be and then keyframe that. Keep in mind, we still have linear keyframes, so this should kind of accelerate out of nowhere. If you're inclined, you could ease into this. I kind of like that burst, but you could ease into it just by selecting both of your points, clicking on this little, like on the same tiny little sliver next to the keyframe, drag a big bar across, select all the keyframes, and then say spline, and that should smooth them out. Um, I think that should just be smoothed out now. So let me, you know, let's give that a go. Why not? Let's let that be smoothed out. Rewind over here, or zoom in, rewind all the way, deselect everything, hit play. Should be five frames of nothing, and then with any luck, there we go. This point is pulling up. Now, you do see that there's a kind of a big, I mean, it kind of looks like there's this giant ghost in there. Um, that's because of this region of influence. So that's way too big. Let's say, make that small. I'm going to say five. Now, if we go too small, it might explode, but we can, oh, yep, right away it explodes. So I'm going to try and pause it quickly. If it doesn't instantly pause, I tend to hit, like I said last time, hit Control R or Command R for render, and then immediately you should try and trigger a render, and then it'll pause and then hopefully be fine. Now, I do want the region of influence to be smaller, so our only recourse here then is to hit Control D, 
go to dynamics and under expert, we're going to crank up our steps per frame. Let's try jumping it double the amount to 10. It does mean it takes twice as long for the dynamics to calculate, but let's see if this works a little bit better. So five frames in, this should start slowly moving up. You can see that that circle is a lot smaller. There's just a couple of points. Didn't explode this time because we gave it more steps per frame. Like I said, it's kind of a hammer, but it gets the job done. Now this is doing a lovely job of pulling this up. This cloth looks amazing. We've got all these wrinkles, but even though we kind of set an initial state, like the, all of the original bends and the springs and everything are still remembering the where they were when they started. So this should be able to return back to its original shape completely perfectly. So this is doing an absolutely lovely job of traveling upward. I'm a little worried I didn't go up quite far enough because we're already at the halfway point and we haven't even uncovered half of the object. So that might be something we need to do. Although maybe we can do a little trick and um, depending on the way this looks, maybe we'll make two strings. That might be fun. Let this continue traveling upward. Doing a nice job. We got all those points up there, which is probably doing a good job of not letting that escape. It is a sharp angle, but you know that's realistic. That would be getting caught on that sharp angle. It might have been a good idea to do like a subdivision surface or something to stop those from traveling, but we'll worry about that more on the car model. Now you see that this this pulled up and it did a fine job of it. We just didn't go anywhere near far enough for it to pull all the cloth. So you know what? That's fine. I'm going to rewind and let's tweak this a little bit. With the spring, I'm going to find a different point. So I'm going to travel further forward. I'm going to very carefully click. There we go. That's a point. Actually, that's a little far forward. So I'm going to scoot back a little bit. There we go. So it's grabbing that point right there. And I can eyeball this. Just scoot it to approximately that location. And then make sure you click set rest length. And now I'll make a second one. And you see how easy this is. If I scoot this backward, maybe I'll put it right here just over the flame. And let's change this point position or the index it's trying to find. And I want to scoot this to a proper point right there. Perfect. So it's selected there. So now we have two springs, two different points that they're connected to. But because we only keyframed the Y position, I was able to move those uh, in the positions that they are. And I don't have to change anything else. It was that simple. So uh, I'm, I'm going to try just running this and not adding more keyframes. Let's see if the, the two strings pull up more material enough to pull it more out of frame. And I mean, I don't even know what our final framing is, but let's see what this does. So we've got two of these, two strings are getting pulled up. We could, of course, animate a string, attach some point there where they get pulled. Um, stylistic choice, but that's not, that's not the interesting part here for this tutorial. So uh, look at the, look how gorgeous these folds are as they're pulling. Now, letting these continue traveling. Now, of course, we could bake this, but that would take a little bit more time um, to, for us to go preview it. But you can see, yeah, we seem to have done a pretty good job of picking the middle point. So we get this nice arc right here, front and back getting pulled up. It's getting a little caught there from the friction. So it's possible that we might want to add a certain frame to turn off the friction. But as of right now, I'm not super worried yet. There's a lot of friction, which is pulling those back. Well, let's go. We're probably going to get quite to the snap of it pulling up. So I am kind of thinking that a little less friction will probably go a long way. So sneaking in a couple keyframes to get the friction working better will probably be a good idea. Yeah, as soon as, man, just from the heavy friction, it does not want to let go. But once again, I'm happy when we run into a problem here so that we can problem solve for what other people might, might run into. Once again, I don't think we need to extend the keyframes, but what we do need to do is grab our cloth and create, actually not even the cloth, we need to, uh, I mean, we can have, uh, we can, uh, we could keyframe all of the dynamic tags everywhere, which, you know, technically we could have just a single dynamic tag with a whole bunch of children and we could just change one. That's not the way we built it. It might've been nice. Maybe we'll keep that in mind with the car, but let's just grab the cloth and decrease its friction. Now, what we have to do is be a little bit careful because if we decrease the friction too quickly, it's going to start sliding off of all the surfaces because it's going to be suddenly in a new condition. So I think what we want to do is be maybe just a little bit, you know, use our eye a little bit here. Let's, let's run it forward a little bit until these points have dragged everything far enough up where it's like, okay, everything's kind of being affected. And if, if things start sliding a little bit from that point forward, it won't suddenly feel like it's because the like everything suddenly got really slippery it'll look like it's because these are getting tugged up so you can see already we're in a point where those are starting to get taut 
this is getting moved a little bit. I think right around here, this is far enough where I'm going to grab our cloths, dynamic tag, go to friction, keyframe. And I think over the course of just the next couple frames, let's let it go a few frames just to get a little bit of a transition. Uh, honestly, uh, let's try going to zero. Let's, we don't need any friction. These can just freely slide off each other as cloth. So I'm gonna go down to zero friction at this time. Um, now it's gonna look a little bit different if we continue because I should have been transitioning this entire time. But you know what, let's just hit frame forward and make sure that this is working properly. And yeah, you can see, look how freely this is sliding off the surface now. So that was very important. And you can see, look at oh, look at this gorgeous draping. And even here, we're still getting some of those wrinkles in there, but all the existing wrinkles are allowed to pull pull loose and not be kind of baked in. If you imagine doing a technique where we were manually painting in wrinkles, like how do you get rid of those wrinkles? We'd have to like morph them away. And once again, I feel like we did pull this cloth far enough away. It's, you know, it's a little bit shorter back there. That doesn't bother me. Uh, because if our framing was, you know, if our final reveal is something like this, um, then then it's completely moved away properly. So why don't we even get a couple keyframes in here? Why not? Uh, let's say, you know, I guess the keyframes will come later. So, but that's fine. We got this camera. Now, what I do want to do is bake this. So, um, to do the entire Alembic process like we did before. So... We will go to our cloth, go to the dynamics tag, go to cache, click bake object, and this will probably take a minute or two, and we'll just cut to it. Okay, that wasn't too bad, about two minutes. So that's baked. We should be able to do this in real time. Okay, you see it kind of popped in the first frame, but I think it will play properly as long as we refresh. Um, although, actually, this does happen sometimes where one there's one bad frame, but let's not worry about that. If I play, you can see our cloth pulls up very smooth, looks great, completely pulls out of the frame. Uh, I love it. That's pretty much perfect. So, like I said, what my next step usually is to right-click on that cloth and bake as a limbic. I need R20 or 21 to bake a single object as a limbic. But with that done, we could disable our dynamics tag on the cloth, just in case we don't want to go back to it. I can disable that, hide it. And now we've got this Alembic file. Now we've got this first frame, which is, it's just a bum frame. I don't know why it decided to do that. But what's great about Alembic is if we go to the actual um, object here, I can say negative one on the offset. And now frame zero is moved forward or, you know, everything's moved back one. So now we get this looking proper. If we have play, it will actually play from frame zero. All animates up. I think this actually looks really nice by itself. Um, but if we wanted to, it is pretty easy to speed this up. We can double the speed. And now we get, boom, bigger, quicker reveal. Let's go 300. I'm surprised that that still looks really nice. Yeah, boom, a nice, a nice quick reveal. And, like, yeah, it works perfect. So now we can do our little camera move. Um, I think our final logo, it moves away really quickly. So let's just say this is a really quick logo reveal. So let's say by frame 30, we want to be seeing maybe this. Uh, I'm going to go back to Control or Command D. Keyframes, spline. Let's get a smooth arc in there. Keyframe our position and rotation on the camera. And then at zero, let's get a lower angle. Maybe pull that a little bit. We even go to like an eye level a bit. Just do that simple move there. So now we have play that will go and do a nice reveal. We can of course grab the keyframe. This is not a tutorial about keyframing a camera. So let's deselect everything. And you know, of course we could, we got the camera selected. I could select those keyframes, right click, animation, show F curve. And here's all the curves. And of course, just grabbing these. We could scoot them forward in time, maybe frame 35. And we've got our different key values, but if we set this to custom, custom, does not let us do it with uh, two different types perhaps. I don't go into these types of, <laughs> this uh, type of setup too often. I'm just gonna eyeball it since it's not letting me click it. If I just drag these further back, it's gonna create a smoother ease out on our keyframe. So we can zoom out, settle in a little bit better. That's looking a little clunky there. So you know what? I'm going to undo that. Scooting them forward is good enough for the quick thing I'm doing here. I, I honestly, uh, the when uh, I helped to build Gorilla Cam, it'd probably be the go-to. I would do the plugin from Grayscale Gorilla. 
would do a nice job of automatically easing that out. If anything, I, I it does always end up being a pain to animate cameras because you get those kind of weird overlaps. But anyway, that's not what this is about. It's not what it's about. Uh, this is about getting the cloth yanked up. And so we've got a little product reveal. I actually want to do a do a huge shout out uh, during one of the Patreon live streams. We are exploring possibilities for this tutorial. And I was asking like, what, what can we use cloth for? And somebody said like, oh, oh, a product reveal. I was like, oh my God, that's an amazing tutorial. So that's how this came about. So thanks for that suggestion. And thanks for everybody supporting on Patreon. So yeah, that's doing a great job. Look at this yanking way. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else to add on to the section, but I think it's actually looking pretty good. So why don't we wrap up this part where we, you know, this is kind of applying it to text or a spline, some sort of extrude. That's the idea behind this one. So join me for the next part where we try and apply this to a more complex model, an entire car, and we'll see what we can do with that. In fact, we'll probably spend a little extra time on that one, try and set up a couple of renders. I'll probably use plugins, some plugins in that one just to make it look pretty and quickly set things up for the parts that aren't terribly important. And even maybe the more specific workflow that I use, I was trying to do all of this part with no plugins, no add-ons, just so that everybody gets up in the next one. Uh, I'll probably use a couple of plugins that I, I help design, like uh, maybe Gorilla Cam, and we'll do some texture stuff from the texture pack that Chad put together at Grayscale Gorilla. And then even uh, some signal. I really like using signal for being able to animate the parameters because it makes it really easy to tweak and go back to it. Where here we're kind of destructive. We're destroying the keyframes after we're done with them. But with signal, uh, we don't have to be nearly as destructive with it. So, yep, there we go. Yanks it upward. And once again, uh, we covered it in the last one. But, you know, take this Alembic, drop it in the subdivision surface, make it smooth. Then we can view the entire thing and yoink. And, of course, uh, this is if we were to hit render here, you know, this geometry is not all going to be there. In fact, a lot of this, we could even say that that shouldn't render and we'd make a nice, high poly, rounded, golden, super nice looking version of this. We can hide all that extra stuff and we could even call it, you know, those are spheres, but let's drop a copy in there of that. No, we can just call it um, collisions or colliders, whatever. And then here we could grab our spline, increase the subdivisions, Set the maximum length again, 15, round all that out on the extrude, add a little bit of rounding, even just a rounding of one. Look how much different that looks if we do a rounding of one. Uh, there's a particular combination we can round this really cleanly, but you see right now it's pushing upward. So if I round it by two, I want to make sure I subtract two from the height so it moves back down and now it won't. Now it will look correct. So you see it's not passing through and it gets the reveal. We ran on the low poly version and then we can do the reveal of the high poly version that could get all the nice, lovely textures applied. So there we go, wrapping up part two of this three-part tutorial series. In the next part, we're gonna be tackling a car, like revealing a car, going into lots of detail, even art directing the cloth so we can get the wrinkles laid out in a very particular way. So that one's really fun. It's a little bit longer, but... Um, that wraps this one up. If you liked it, I'd love you to go ahead and leave a comment. Come and join the Rocket Lasso community. You can find us at Rocket Lasso on all the different social media. We have a Slack channel where everybody continues conversations and especially the Rocket Lasso live show where we answer Cinema 40 questions every Wednesday at two o'clock central time. So that should wrap this up. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. So there we go, wrapping up. <clears throat> so there we go, wrapping up part two of this three part. <clears throat> so there we go, wrapping up. <clears throat>